I think taxonomy is, uh, so the students of science, I think they would uh, have some idea. So if we look at the definition of taxonomy, that is really a science of classification. Okay. So this is the scheme of classifying, usually used for biological organisms. So uh, for example, dividing them into genus, species, and so on and so forth. Broadly speaking, this covers classification of anything. Um, generally, it is used in that, in that context of when we are talking about things which are um, so, uh, so biological organisms. However, if we look at now as the knowledge is expanded, that it is, the taxonomic systems are now being used for almost everything. So whether you take the types of organisms, whether you take types of rocks, whether you take types of, so, um, of uh, marine life, wherever you go, the taxonomy is, is being used. And the reason why that's so important is because that we are in the era of information overload. Okay. So a lot of information is being produced. Sure. And the difference now is that with the modern IT systems, they are accessible. So previously, a lot might have been written, but not accessible. And now suddenly all of that is. So if you look at word class libraries, for example, their cataloging system is, you know, that would, that would be, in itself, would need a system to how to catalog those. Mm -hmm. So that much information has, um, has, uh, has increased. So what science teaches is that somehow we need to bring all that information together. And that bringing of information together in a systematic format, which any other person is able to comprehend and understand, would fall in the taxonomy. Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal, we have the Islamic knowledge spread over nearly 15 centuries. Oh. So scholars have written books, they have imparted their pulse of wisdom. All of that has to be brought together. And that's what taxonomy does. The beauty of Sayyidi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala. Let's take one example of the encyclopedia he produced, and that is uh, Fatawa Razawiya. So 33 volumes, when it has been, uh, I guess, done for the ease of the people now. So 33 volumes spread over 22,000 pages, 6,847 questions Allah, which have been answered. And under those questions, thousands of other legal rulings have come into discussion. And in addition to having these questions, he also produces 206 booklets in this encyclopedia. So I think that if we even forget everything else for Ta'ala's Rahmatullah Ta'ala's written, and this is one of his over 1,000 books, oh, as we are just one of them, if we exclude, um, if we exclude everything else, we need classification for these over 6,000 questions. So the beauty of Sayyidi Allah's Rahmatullah Ta'ala is that when he answers a question, he brings evidence for the last 14 centuries, all of that together. And then what a true, in modern um, people would call a professor, what the, he would do in a professorial way is he would bring all this evidence under bibliography and, and then gives his final ruling by combining all that knowledge and simplifying for the person who's asked that question. And that you see throughout Fatawa Razaviya Sharif, which I'll share some examples. But um, that is the Sayyidi Allah Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, I feel, is the, I guess, one of the basic things about science. How could one be you know, doing more for science if he didn't have the understanding of what has been done in the past? So the knowledge is always, it is always increasing from a baseline. If you don't know the baseline, you can't go on the top, but say the Allah's Rahmatullah Ta'ala's quality is that he knows all of that, what has been written over 14 centuries, and then he produces it all in one booklet and one answer for the person to understand. And sometimes the person who has asked the question is not clear in his mind. 
So the question can be ambiguous. So there can be many gray areas to it. There can be many gray areas to it, or even in the mind of the person, he's not sure which aspect do I want to address and what I want to, and to ask about. So the beauty of Sayyidi Allah and again, the way he has, obviously the grasp of the, on the subject, but also being able to understand the various, um, the, uh, the, the various iterations of that answer. So uh, one question comes to him again in Fatawa Razviya Sharif regarding divorce. Okay. So somebody sends him that question about, uh, which on the face of it seemed like a simple question. And Sayyidi Allah said, the way you have asked this question, there are 58 possible scenarios. Allahu Akbar. Let me write all of those for you one by one. Just in case you were thinking about this or that or that. Allahu Akbar. And after writing 58, he knew that how would that person be able to even understand all of that? He said, so now I will reclassify all of that into four overarching principles. Allah. And here are those four overarching principles with 58 possible scenarios from one question. Allah. And you know, so this is, I guess, an example of inspired knowledge. It's in it where somebody is able to just ascertain from the quality of question what could be the potential answers. And then another beauty of Sayyidi Allah was that when you are trying to simplify the information, trying to do it in a sort of algorithmic fashion, so there are multiple scenarios. So you give an algorithm, if the answer is A, you do this, if the answer is B, you do this, and then there are two further scenarios, it goes on and on and on. And Sayyidi Allah when he's asked those type of questions, he never would leave you unfulfilled. That's the beauty. So if we see right at the beginning, when it comes to showing his respect for Allah Taala and the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we don't need to go anywhere uh, after the khutbah, the sermon he's written at the beginning of Atawa Razaviyya Sharif, where he has used 90 titles and ulama karam say that somebody who could even read them is a scholar himself. Allah and imagine the one who's written them. Who's written them. Then in the, and when it comes to, so let me give you an example of one of the biggest studies which medical science would produce. It usually comes under these review magazines. And they have some word class magazines, which basically their purpose is review. So they just do this whole review on one particular subject. So the most number of references you will find in that would might be 250, 200, 150. And that would still be considered a lot of references. So somebody has read all those and written them in bibliography. Now look at say the Allah one question comes to him regarding funeral prayer. Okay. And say the Allah he writes 157 pages Allah and Allah. in the evidence from which books he has referred to while answering this question, he writes 130 books, names of books in his bibliography. Allah. But for one answer. For one answer. Then comes in the Kitab al-Nikah, in the preface, in the foreword, he writes 90 books' names which he has referred to whilst answering that question. And then when he went, I mean, this, this incident is incredible. He went, the, the second time he went on Hajj, that is when the, the shuyukh of Hijaz e Muqaddas, they recognized what a gem he was. So with the two books he wrote whilst he was there, the first one, which was about the knowledge of unseen of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Dawlat al makkiyah bil maddat al ghaybiyah he was ill. So he was suffering, he was ill, and he was asked that question by an Arab sheikh. He wrote the whole book, 1,000 pages. He wrote in eight hours on the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, knowledge of the unseen. And then um, another sheikh who has since um, read it in, of modern times, he says that the, the things he has covered in that, which is not even part, this part of a discussion, Allah has went into another branch of science while answering this question, and that's topology. Allah. And this is 
Uh, just one book, he's written on one question, Allah and Allah. he's written that. So I think that's again the quality of Sayyidi Anas Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, the, the topology and the other book which he wrote there was actually a, one of the, I guess, the key issues of modern society, and that is about economics. So Allah Azza Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, so the two books he wrote in that journey. So first was that which covered another branch of science, which, and the second was about economics. And he covered the whole banking system Allah in that Allah. book. So imagine his knowledge of economics, which probably we wouldn't even have time to discuss. That's another branch of science, which he has covered in that, in that book. And he talked about how banking could be done without interest. So he gave principles. And you know, this is talking even before the modern banking system was imagined. You know, so there might have been some countries. Most of the world didn't know about banking systems, and that's when Sayyidi Allah Rahmatullah Taala is giving example. Those were prob probably the days when bartering system was still in place. In still in place in some place, absolutely. And then if you look at so that's again everyday life. The other big, uh, quality is that someone asked Sayyidi Allah Rahmatullah Taala about meat, and the, you know the types of meat, the meat we can eat, and all, and all of that. And uh, Ulama Karam said that no one in one place has classified that information as beautifully as Sayyidi Alas Rahmatullahi Ta'ala. So he said even in halal meat, there are 22 different things which are either haram or makroo or should not be eaten. Allah Akbar. So look at the level of his research that even, he, he's not confined himself, the question was around meat and he's not limiting himself to that. He then classifies it further and says, let me make it easy for you. Here are the 22 things you should avoid in that as well. So whichever walk of life you look at, Sayyidi Allah Ta'ala is shining like a bright star.